para participar do Falas Estratégicas Internacional da UFSM, Zoria Miller, um importante fotojornalista americano, está na cidade. Ele é especialista em cobrir guerras, crises humanitárias e desastres naturais. Em 2006, foi nomeado fotojornalista do ano por conta de seu trabalho documentando o conflito em Gaza. Hello Zoria, welcome to Santa Maria. Thank you. Um, how does it feel for you being here in Brazil and having the opportunity to talk with other students and to lecture about your experiences? Um, first of all, it's a pleasure to be in Brazil. I, I love the country, I love the people, and um, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, it's always a, a wonderful opportunity for me to get to speak with students because I think a lot of people don't get a chance to uh, speak with people that can tell them that basically anything is possible. If you want to uh, experience the world, if you want to uh, tell people stories, if you want to uh, do things to help people, that it's not something that's uh, beyond our limits, that it's something we can do. So. One of the things I like very much to do when I'm speaking at universities is to try and explain to people that it's possible to, to help people and to live an interesting life and to travel. And I'm thankful to, to be here for that opportunity. Uh, what do you plan to show to our community, community during your lecture and during your, during your workshop? Mm -hmm. um, at this point, I've worked in almost 100 countries, so uh, what I can show is, is normally just a, a small sample of that. So uh, this evening, I'll be showing some images from Iraq and Afghanistan and Gaza and several other conflict zones. Uh, aside from conflict, I'll also be showing some images of disasters and social issues. Uh, I think it's common now that journalists can get hung up on things that only make headlines for instance, the passion of conflict, and they lose track of kind of the everyday struggle of people. So I try to also bring a lot of that into my work, into my lectures. So I'll be speaking about uh, AIDS and poverty and uh, victims of the tsunami and uh, people struggling after the Haitian earthquake and uh, as, as much as I have time for. Have you ever had other experiences here in Brazil previously? Can you tell us about it? Unfortunately, I haven't because it's my first time yeah. here. But uh, I've always been interested uh, to come to, to Brazil, especially to Rio, to see the favelas. And uh, yeah. I've worked in a lot of areas um, in my career that are uh, you know, other countries' equivalents of favelas, uh, poor areas where people struggle more working class. and. Uh, it's always interesting to see how these uh, communities work, and I think it's important to try and show the rest of the world how, how people live in these areas. Talking about your personal life, how did you first get interested in photographing wars, humanitarian crises, and natural disasters? Mm -hmm. um, I started photography when I was 15 years old. I took a photography class in my high school. And uh, I instantly fell in love with it. And uh, I did a lot of projects with homeless people and um, their lives and their struggles uh, in the US. And I was very lucky to win a national award when I, uh, at the end of my first year of school. And uh, that gave me a lot of passion and a lot of drive to continue photography. And uh, I kept up for a couple years, and then uh, I, changed, uh, I changed my focus to music and studied music in university, and then I came back to photography later in life, and for the last uh, oh, 10, 11 years, I've been doing it professionally. Uh, what is the main purpose of your job? I mean, what do you want to show people with your photographs? I think initially, my, my number one goal when I started out with this type of photography was I felt like people in the West, like in the US and Europe, really didn't have a good idea of what it was like for people to struggle in different situations. I mean, it's very common that you, that I would hear people talking and saying, you know, why don't these people just get jobs or why don't they change this or why don't they change that? And from having experienced countries like these, I knew that it wasn't that simple. It's, it's not like the US where we have an, an, enough of a social structure that it's just a matter of getting out of bed and getting a job. It's much more difficult. So I really wanted to kind of show Westerners what people's lives looked like. And also beyond what they looked like, I think photography allows you to feel compassion for people. And I wanted people to really connect 
emotionally with my subjects. And that's what I, I love the most about photography. Your clients are important medias like the New York Times, BBC, uh, CNN, and Rolling Stone. What is the biggest responsibility about working with these magazines and newspapers? Mm. I guess it depends on the publication and on the project. Uh, usually the most difficult thing is getting paid by them. They, <laughs> they like to, uh, they love to publish images and they're not so, they're not so happy to uh, pay for them. So that's, that's one of the bigger uh, issues that you face on, a, on an everyday basis. But it, it's really like any business. I mean, you deal with different people and different people have different ways of working. So I think the, the most difficult thing is working on a schedule um, because I do most of my projects on a freelance basis. I can do them, uh, you know, if it takes me more time to do them, then I take the extra time. If you're working on a deadline with a newspaper or a magazine, it can be very difficult because sometimes you have 24 hours, sometimes you have one week, and uh, it can be difficult to fit a, a whole project into a short amount of time and have it to them by the time they need to publish the magazine. Uh, during your job, have you ever faced risky situations? I mean, did you ever have to make a choice between photographing or not photographing due to the danger? Yeah, um, yeah. I, I think I've been in, in a lot of, of difficult situations. Uh, there are situations where you have to put your own safety and the safety of people around you above taking the photo. But uh, for the most part, especially as you get more experience with the job, you learn how to kind of do both of them. How you can take a picture and also keep yourself and the people around you safe. And I think that most photojournalists, if they were in a position where they could help someone instead of taking a picture, that they would make that choice. It's, it's really, it's one of the more common questions that I'm asked, and I think uh, m most of us are human beings, and we would rather uh, help somebody if we can, but uh, on the other side of that, uh, a lot of times we feel that we can help people more with our photos, uh, you know, and there might be a situation where we could help someone slightly in an immediate uh, time frame, but if we take a picture of it, we hope that that picture will educate people about the situation and change things on a more long-term basis. In your opinion, what was the most difficult, difficult situation you had to photograph? Give us an example. Uh, there's been so many. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, my first year in Iraq was really difficult. Uh, it was it wasn't so much one thing uh, that was more different than, than others, it was just a combination of so many different things. It was a combination of uh, the extreme heat of the summer, of the, the incredible uh, difficult situation that was there, both for the Iraqi people and for US soldiers. There was a lot of pain, there was a lot of danger, there was a lot of suffering. Um, just working as a photographer there was difficult because you're constantly in a dangerous situation, you're constantly exhausted, and you're still having to think about what you need to do to get a good picture, and that's, that's extremely difficult to do. And I think it was one of the first times where I was ever in a situation where I, I was constantly in danger and constantly around other people and constantly having to take all of these different things into account instead of just focusing on photography. I mean, it's a nice thing about doing projects on your own and alone is that you can take your time and you can compose a picture and you can make sure that artistically everything is working. In a conflict situation, it's more about keeping safe and doing things quickly and making sure that you don't hurt yourself or anyone else. Um, it is known through your curriculum vitae that you visit and lived in several different countries. How do you feel about moving and changing your whereabouts frequently? Uh, you know, I, I kind of go through phases with it. There are certain times in life where I really love it. I love the freedom of being in a different place all the time. I love the excitement of new places. And uh, there's other times where I get really tired of being on the road. I've had many times where I've been in seven countries a week um, I've, you know, it's, uh, it, it's just kind of a constant lifestyle of moving and being away from friends and away from family. And I think it, it can be very difficult and I'm going through a phase right now where it's, where it's more difficult and I, I think more about, uh, you know, that it would be nice to be in one place and to enjoy simple things. But uh, then if I think 
even more about it. I think if I did that permanently, it would also be difficult for me, and I, I desire to, to you know, experience and do more things. Yeah. Yeah. As you are a freelance photo photographer, what are the advantages of working independently? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, there's really a lot. <laughs> I, think, I think being able to, to go about stories in the, way that, um, in the way that they present themselves is very important. For example, uh, a lot of times a publication will give you a certain story. They'll say, go to, uh, go to Pakistan and do a story on uh, whatever, whatever the subject is. You know, the difficult lives of children or um, the, the economy or something like that. The problem is, is a lot of times when you go to a country to do a story that way, you'll find out once you're there that there's a much more interesting story under the surface. And that's the great thing about really going with an open mind, is that you can, you can just begin to spend time with the local people and learn how they live and what their struggles are. And then you can, you can capture their stories in your own way, on your own timetable, and without... Um, you know, without the influence of someone telling you that this is what the story is. When it could be that there's that story and 10 other stories that are all very interesting. So I like that freedom. It feels more, it feels like a more natural and real way to, uh, to document. Okay, thank you. I wish you enjoy Santa Maria. Welcome and have a good time here. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.